Christmas is in a couple of days, so let's build an ATtiny85 NeoPixel tree. This is a double-sided board where one side has most of the circuitry, including a CR2032 battery holder, a 3 volt to 5 volt boost converter, push buttons, ATtiny85, power switch. On the other side, we have silkscreen artwork to decorate the tree and eight NeoPixels. There's a through hole at the top, so we can use one of these pin mechanisms and make it into a badge, or we can put a hook in it and use it as an ornament. One thing I should have done differently is rotate this battery connector 90 degrees, because whether I mount it so it's opening to this side or to this side, there's components in the way. So I'm going to have to mount the battery holder off to this side, because the tallest part is this inductor, and I need room to try and get the battery in. I chose two push-button switches that I want to use ultimately, but I don't have them in stock, so I'm going to have to take through-hole push-buttons and cut the leads and try to mount them on here as best I can. So let's get this built up and see how it works. Today's project video is sponsored by PCBWay. Right now there's a big sale with lots of coupons for December, and discounts on these various advanced services and PCB assembly. And if you use coupon code CHRISTMAS10, you get a $10 discount for free prototype PCBs at PCBWay.com. Here's the schematic. There's three sections to it. First, there's this boost circuit to take a 3 volt CR2032 battery and boost it to 5 volts for the board. There's an ATtiny85, and it's controlling 8 NeoPixels. This power supply is the same AP3012 based switcher that I've been using a lot lately. And while prototyping, I'm just going to put a power supply on here. And I have footprints all over the place, like this ferrite bead footprint between the 5 volt output of the supply and VCC 5 volts powering the NeoPixels. The switcher 5 volts directly powers the ATtiny85. But just in case there's anything weird with power supply noise from one side or the other, I have an opportunity to try doing a little filtering, but also I can just use this as test points. And if I'm drawing way too much current on these LEDs, I can just separate this and give it a different 5 volts from somewhere else off the board. But my intention is to keep the brightness relatively low, so it's okay to power it from this regulator. On the AT Tiny, I have this programming pin header right here for the SPI and reset pins, so I can do in-system programming. I also have two optional push buttons. I have PWM going to an RC low-pass filter, and those go to a header where I can hook up an oscilloscope, and I can draw images on the oscilloscope. I have these resistors on the push buttons because Especially on this serial clock, while programming, if somebody pushes a button, it won't be a dead short to ground. And finally, there's this pixel output, which is the data output going to this chain of NeoPixels. There's a resistor footprint in series with each data connection, including one right at the end, which doesn't go anywhere. And right now I'm using them as zero ohm jumpers, so I am just shorting the pads together. But I wanted this so that I can isolate these NeoPixels from the ATtiny in case I want to drive them from something else. And also, I can just connect the ATtiny output to something else if I wanted to try driving other NeoPixels somewhere else. And in case I were getting signal reflections, I also wanted the chance to put a couple of hundred ohms of series resistance here to dampen those reflections. But it turns out I don't seem to have any reflections, so I'm just using zero ohm jumpers. And if I'm going to connect to this last pixel and try to take it off board and drive even more, there's another resistor here, again, to dampen any reflections and to allow me to connect in. Looking at the sketch, the NeoPixel part of this is straightforward using Adafruit NeoPixel example code. I wrote here everything is just a mess and I'm going to plan to overhaul this, who knows, maybe by next Christmas. But the PWM XY oscilloscope code is based on a project that I found on a blog, and I did a video on this blog post a couple of years ago, so I'll link that below, because this actual blog post disappeared. And I made note that I set the ATtiny85 as 8 megahertz internal oscillator. 1 megahertz 
won't allow this to compile because the NeoPixel library will say it can't do it. And I can set it to 16 megahertz, but it draws more current. Because this is based on the previous oscilloscope XY mode project, and the NeoPixel part is really straightforward, I don't want to spend much time on this, but let's just skim through. Again, this is really crude, especially the way I'm debouncing the inputs for the buttons and using these weird delays. I was trying to get things to work better, like using interrupts and button debounce properly, but because I'm using these weird timer settings and the oscilloscope XY code is time sensitive, I basically just threw this together and tweaked it till it worked and it was built up slowly, so this is what I ended up with. It's not meant to be an example of great coding. Here's how we draw the image on the oscilloscope screen. There's an array of X and Y coordinates, and these are PWM output levels between 0 and 255, which equate to voltages between 0 and 5 volts. So for a given X and Y coordinate, if we think of the oscilloscope as graph paper and treat it like an etch-a-sketch in XY mode, we set the vertical and horizontal so that it scales between 0 and 5 volts X and Y direction. So if we wanted to put the dot in the center of the scope screen, which is 2.5 volts X and 2.5 volts Y, we would send a PWM of about 128 to the X and Y outputs, and that will get us here on the scope. So we keep changing coordinates, and the oscilloscope trace will follow and fill in the blanks, and we get an image. The sketch is set up so that we can either draw an oscilloscope Christmas tree image, or we can draw one of four NeoPixel patterns, and we control this with push buttons. Things like these timer values I just referenced from the original sketch. And now in the main loop, this is not the most elegant way to do this. I'm just using a bunch of while loops in sequence. I'm waiting until a push button occurs, then I change to the next pattern that I want to, and that will get me out of the while loop. So if I'm drawing an image on the scope and I push the button to go into LED mode, it's going to do the pattern called LEDs1. So when we're drawing things on the NeoPixels, all we're doing is using the Adafruit library to set a pixel color or use the pixel fill command to set all of them the same color. So in this example where I randomly choose a pixel and then I randomly choose a red, green, and blue level, I keep doing that and then I double check the push buttons and see if I want to change to a different mode. Then it will come back and start the loop and choose a different pixel and a different color and check the buttons and so on. For developing the sketch, I have it plugged into the AVR programmer from my previous project, and I have scope probes hooked up and an external power supply. Now that it's hooked up to the scope, I can use the push buttons to cycle between the oscilloscope display and the built-in LED patterns. As usual, the LEDs look much better in person, and if I had more time to do a better job, I'd like to improve these patterns, but for the concept, it'll work. Now with the battery in, let's see how this looks as an ornament. Thanks for checking out the project, and special thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this project. See you on the next one.